Kevin Garnett inspired Joe Kim Noah to become a great big man, and then he was really mean to him. Kevin Garnett is one of the best and most influential big men in NBA history. His super mobile, versatile game taught young, tall kids that they didn't have to develop into stiff, lumbering centers. Joe Kim Noah was one such youngster. He owned KG's jersey and hung KG posters on his walls. And as Joe Kim grew close to seven feet tall, he modeled his developing game in KG's image. Just like Garnett, he wanted to step out and hit jumpers, handle and pass like a guard, cover tons of ground on defense. And he wanted to play with the same level of intensity that made Garnett a star. But then Joe Kim met his idol, which is something you should never do. Noah was drafted by the Bulls in 2007, the same year Garnett became a Celtic. Here's Joe Kim's recollection of that first meeting. The truth is, you know, my rookie year, you know, I was, you know, in admiration of this guy. And, and you know, he kind of shut me down. And, you know, he was very mean to me my rookie year. <laughs> Years later, Paul Pierce detailed that interaction. Garnett apparently mocked Noah by asking if he could touch his long hair. All at once, Joe Kim realized his childhood hero was a tremendous dick. That much is obvious now. By all accounts a lovely person off the court, Garnett was a huge bully on it. Unrelentingly cruel, in ways that went beyond normal trash talk. Particularly after KG became a Celtic, horror stories piled up about his antics on the court. Charlie Villanueva said Garnett called him a cancer patient. Garnett made Andre Blatch cry. Garnett made Glenn Davis cry and Davis was his teammate. So Garnett's cruelty to Noah wasn't unique. It was part of a pattern. But Noah wasn't just any other target. He wasn't a bully like Garnett, but Noah was fiery and irritating on the court and outspoken off of it. This is a guy whose own teammates voted unanimously to suspend him for snapping at an assistant coach during his rookie year. He had an attitude. So when his role model belittled him in his rookie season or elbowed him in the gut the following year, Jokum wasn't just gonna retreat. This would not be a predator and prey relationship. This would be beef. But opportunities for the beef to heat up in a playoff setting slipped away, mostly. Noah's Bulls met the defending champion Celtics in the first round in 2009. It was a thrilling seven game series, but Garnett missed the whole thing because of a knee injury. And in 2010, a matchup with the league best Cavaliers prevented Noah's Bulls from advancing to face Boston in the playoffs. But Noah wanted a fight during those playoffs, so he reached for it. KG and the Celtics were playing the Heat, and in game one, Garnett hit Miami's Quentin Richardson with an elbow that got him ejected and suspended for game two. Noah couldn't resist commenting from afar, calling Garnett a dirty player. KG basically dismissed him, but Noah had a taste for beef, and he kept cooking from there. Early the next season, the Celtics hosted the Bulls, now coached by former Boston assistant Tom Thibodeau. It was a wild game in which Noah got a technical foul and later got stripped by Garnett in the final seconds. Days after that loss, in a Chicago radio appearance, Noah went in. Kevin Garnett will not not be on the list. <laughs> will not get a Christmas gift from me. I don't like him. Yeah. Very mean guy. Yeah. Ugly too. Yeah. <laughs> He's only mean to the young guys and the Euros for some reason. <laughs> Noah had a point on that last thing, by the way. Garnett definitely gave it to youngsters more than his own veteran peers. And after watching him target guys like Marco Bellinelli and Jose Calderon and Zaza Pachulia, you could kind of see where Noah was coming from about the Euros too. Jokum is 10 years younger than Garnett and is half Swedish, half French, so I guess he makes the perfect target. That said, Garnett wasn't about to dignify this beef off the floor. He kept right on dismissing Noah. I'm not entertaining nor addressing, you know, nobodies. I'm not even entertaining now. I'm focused on basketball. Do you consider him a nobody? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like Garnett was ever shy off the floor. I'm sitting in the house, I'm loading up the pump. I'm loading up the Uzi. I got a couple of M16s, a couple of nines. I got a couple of joints with some silencers on. I'm just loading up clips. He just refused to acknowledge this topic. The funny thing is, Coach Thibodeau, who knew both guys well, said Noah reminded him of Garnett more than anyone else, which Noah understood to be a compliment. And the other funny thing is that by 2012 and 2013, the Bulls took the upper hand in the rivalry and the beef kind of diminished. In January 2013, after the Bulls beat the Celtics for the sixth time in their last nine meetings, Noah mentioned that Garnett was still prone to throwing elbows, but he didn't seem to care anymore. There was still animus between the two, but it was just a matter of competition. 
When Noah made his first All-Star team in 2013, the two Eastern Conference teammates professed mutual respect. That doesn't mean they were done though. Garnett spent part of his twilight with the Nets and he was very much back on his bullshit. It was during his Nets tenure that Garnett's attacks on Noah sort of jumped the shark. Yes, that was Garnett chomping at Noah's hand. Noah was almost at a loss for words, but it was all fun and games, or at least KG's version of fun and games. When Garnett retired in 2016, Noah paid him a fitting tribute. Kevin Garnett was Joe Kim Noah's idol, then his enemy. Now, there are a couple of old guys who are past the point of having idols or enemies. That's how beef goes. You battle, you bully, you butt heads, literally. But sometimes you get old and a little soft and what used to be fierce fades away. So that's why you should never meet your favorite celebrity. But if you do meet your favorite celebrity and start some beef, then tell me about it and I'll make a video.